It's spooky season, and that means all your favorite games are coming out with limited time events. But what if I told you Remnant 2's event is the perfect setup for their upcoming DLC? My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're diving back into one of our favorite games of 2023 and breaking down everything you need to know about the special Aberration Domination event. If you haven't heard by now, Remnant 2 is running a limited time event from October 27th through Halloween on the 31st, where you'll encounter special aberrations at a massively increased rate that drop a new resource called Corrupted Shards. You'll be able to take 10 of these Corrupted Shards to your friendly pan vendor Dwell back in Ward 13, where you'll have the option to convert 5 weapons, the Rune Pistol, Meridian, Deceit, Aphelion, and Merciless into Corrupted versions of themselves. This will not only change their special mod into a brand new effect, but the weapon will also have their attack patterns and even innate effects altered entirely. These are, for all intents and purposes, completely new weapons that can inform entirely new builds. Turning these weapons into corrupted versions of themselves will consume that weapon, and depending on how hardcore you want to be, you can either re-farm these weapons afterwards to maintain both versions, or take your corrupted version of the weapon back to Dwell and convert it back for a simulacrum. The levels your weapons were before converting them into corrupted versions will also carry over, so you don't need to worry about re-upgrading these. This also means that these new corrupted shards and aberrations that randomly spawn in place of any normal elite encounter will be accessible even after the event. The event only significantly increases the chance for these to occur, which has been upwards of 25% of the time or more on Apocalypse difficulty. With these new aberrations also comes a whole host of new mutators to earn. Featured on screen right now are 11 we've earned so far, as we aren't entirely sure just how many were added in this free update. You'll only get these by killing the random aberrations, so for everyone out there still cheesing their corrupted shards, you're missing out on a ton of free luminite shards and unique mutators by not farming these encounters. Of these, we really want to point out bottom feeder, bottom heavy, and top heavy all of which have serious potential when upgraded to shake up the DPS landscape for many weapons. In terms of the corrupted weapons, well, we already earned and tested all of them, so why not give you all our impressions of these alternate forms? If you have limited time to participate in the event, possibly knowing which ones we think are best might be valuable information. Right off the bat, let's talk about the Corrupted Rune Pistol, which is by far our top pick for best corrupted weapon. The original effect of the Rune Pistol was Soulbrand, which would simply leave behind echoes of all marked enemies that you killed while active, replenishing 10% of your max health. The weapon also fired a 3 round burst, which really resulted in a decent amount of wasted ammunition. The weapon was good, but it wasn't lights out. The corrupted version, however, is now a weapon we'll be hard pressed to take off. Deathbrand is its new mod, which not only brands all enemies within 25 meters, increasing all incoming damage by 10%, but the echoes left behind after killing an enemy instead increase all weak spot damage by 10% for 10 seconds. Additionally, the weapon now becomes automatic, allowing you to tap the trigger for single shots or hold it down for continuous fire. This makes for a perfect DPS companion, allowing you to mow down trash mobs, setting your long gun up for higher DPS against elites. The weapon is just simply incredible. The next weapon we strongly recommend snagging is Corrupted Deceit. One of the biggest issues we had with Deceit in its original form was the fact that you really needed to play it at more mid to close range with its Ouroboros effect unless you leaned heavily into mixing in charged melee attacks to really consistently taint the blood of targets to maintain your constant weak spot attacks. With Corrupted Deceit, this now gets massively improved. You'll now have access to Windfall, which allows you to fire out a fast traveling mass of spinning blades that penetrate all targets in a line before returning back to the weapon. At any time, triggering the mod again will make the projectile spin in place for a wider AoE for 3 seconds, and activating it once again will recall it. This of course still causes tainted blood, meaning this weapon allows you to more precisely and safely pick what you want to affect and DPS down from range. Additionally, the weapon has a more pinpoint fire rate. If you didn't like the playstyle of Deceit before, or just didn't like having to be relatively close to your target, this new corrupted version is a must try. Corrupted Meridian is another weapon we personally love. Prior to being corrupted, the Meridian would fire single volatile grenades that could explode on direct impact or bounce around wildly, while the mod, Screamer, allowed you to fire a single high-powered rocket that dealt moderate damage in a small AoE. 
Corrupted Meridian, on the other hand, is kind of the inverse of all of this. For starters, your primary fire now fires off a rocket instead, and charging the weapon will actually load additional rockets up to three to be fired in rapid succession. Additionally, the mod, Dead Point, allows you to fire a cluster bomb, and each cluster from the initial explosion will deal 50 damage in a decently spread AoE. We noticed this weapon felt much more effective and controllable in this form than its original base form, and can likely be the foundation for a serious explosive-based build. Corrupted Aphelion is up next, and this one is either a love it or hate it kind of alteration. Beforehand, Aphelion would fire a single hypercharged wide arcing line that passed through all targets in its path. Its mod, Supernova, allowed you to fire out the compressed remains of a dying star as a single orb that when shot would detonate and cause moderate fire and burning damage within a medium-sized AoE. With Corrupted Aphelion, your shots are now split into three shorter but vertically stacked lines that still pass through all enemies in its path. The mod has also been changed to Micronova, instead firing a line of five shattered star remains that gradually spread out over time. Striking these will detonate them like before, only this time each one on its own explosion, and the burning damage triggered from these is nearly three times more than Supernova. Long story short, if you liked the weapon before and wanted to lean heavier into a fire-based build, Corrupted Aphelion may be worth picking up. Last but not least, okay, maybe least, is Corrupted Merciless. Now, this one is strange because turning it corrupted can quite literally bork your bleed build as the bleed effect is completely removed from the weapon, so be warned. Additionally, this thing goes from a high capacity 50 round weapon down to a more precisely tuned three shot weapon that deals significantly higher DPS over a much longer range. Even the mod is completely different. Instead of boosting critical damage and staggering with bloodline, you now have access to bloodshot. While active, Corrupted Merciless will have unlimited reserve ammo and significantly boosted reload speed for 13 seconds. If you manage to land all three rounds in your magazine as weak spot hits, Corrupted Merciless will automatically quick reload, allowing the more laser accurate players to rapidly land high damage shots. It's a truly strange deviation from its base form, but that seems to be the theme of Corrupted Weapons. If you use Merciless as your staple gun in a bleed build, don't even bother with this version. If you're looking for a more sharpshooter focused weapon and you have great accuracy, Corrupted Merciless might actually become your new favorite weapon. All in all, this update slash event comes with a lot of fun build crafting potential and even addresses some major bugs and quality of life issues. The big one, of course, is the addition of loadouts, the number one most requested feature by the community. This makes swapping and even testing build variations much less painful and opens players up to swapping playstyles in a group or in specific encounters much easier. Time and time again, Gunfire Games seems to understand their player base, be it fixing or adding hotly requested features to hosting limited time events that don't exactly lead to any sense of FOMO, since you can still access all of the content we talked about after the event, just at a lower frequency. With a brand new DLC coming very soon for Remnant 2, now is the perfect time to jump back in, farm out some new gear, and even set up a variety of builds for the challenges ahead. We'll be diving into the new DLC on day one with a new set of guides and helpful videos, so keep it right here and never miss a thing. You can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about Remnant and many other great games, and of course, enter for your chance to win tons of free giveaways going on all the time. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.